James 4, 7, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Well, that's not actually everything that that verse says. James wrote something just prior to it. Unfortunately, though, there are many Christians who tend to focus just on that last part. So in this very brief video, we're going to look at the entire verse in the overall context of the passage that is found in. Hi everyone, I'm Mark Leeming, helping you think biblically in a brief amount of time with a brand new video just like this one uploaded each and every Thursday. So if you're new here, please do consider subscribing and don't forget to hit the notification bell. Now, James, the author of this letter, many biblical scholars believe was the half-brother of Jesus, where in Matthew 5.33, James, along with the rest of his siblings, thought that perhaps Jesus had lost his marbles. It was only later, after the resurrection, when James truly believed. In fact, he ended up becoming a leading figure in the early church. Now, a key theme in the letter of James is the emphasis upon the living out of a practical faith. That it's simply not enough to say that you believe. You also have to live as though you believe. You can't just talk the talk. You also have to walk the walk. In James 2.19, for example, James wrote, So you believe that there is one God? Well, even the demons believe that. In other words, yes, the demons, they acknowledge that there is a God, but they certainly don't live in obedience to him. And so there's this great emphasis in the letter of James upon human responsibility when it comes to holiness and personal piety, which now brings us to the overall context of James 4.7. James 4.7 actually reads, Submit yourselves to God then, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. You can't live as the devil wants and then be surprised that he's in control of your life. Now, I should make it clear that unlike God, the devil is not omnipresent. He can't be everywhere at the exact same time. So it's highly unlikely that any of us will ever personally encounter the devil. I think what James was referring to was the demonic realm in general, as per what Paul wrote about in chapter 6 of Ephesians when he spoke of the principalities and powers. Furthermore, contrary to the popular imagination, the Bible does not present the devil as being a hideous looking red creature with two horns. Rather, the Bible describes the devil as a very deceptive, a very manipulative, evil spiritual being. One who fans into flames the fires of sin that already rage in our lives. And so since the best way to prevent fires from starting in the first place is to clear away any flammable material, that's what James warns about through his entire letter. That we must actively clear away the things in our lives that would give the demonic a foothold. For example, in the verses just preceding verse 7, James warns about worldliness, of taking on the world's value system, of taking on the world's modes of thinking and behavior that are so often contrary to God's. In other words, we need to do as James said. We need to submit to God. We need to obey Christ's commands. We need to obey what the Bible teaches. Now, that doesn't mean we have to be perfect. We will never be perfect this side of heaven. But as we grow in our walk with Christ, the stronger we will become. And the stronger we become, the weaker the influence of the demonic has in our lives. To subscribe, click on my face over there. To watch more of my videos, click on the end cards there. Thanks so much. I hope to see all of you next Thursday. Bye for now.